Hey guys, what's going on? This is Tyler, and today I'm going to be starting a brand new what if. And today's what if will be going over what would have happened if Bobbity and Deborah landed on Vampa to look for energy for Boo before heading to Earth. Now, before we go into the actual story, I would like to give a quick shout out to Cobbs for everything he's been doing for this channel. You know, with the art and all that stuff, it just helps out a lot, and really, I just appreciate him a lot, so I decided to give him a shout out here. Be sure to check out his Twitter page down in the description. Now, with that being said, let's dive into part one of what if Broly was found in the Boo Saga. We start our story off with Bobbity and his crew arriving onto planet Vampa. When they arrived, they would sense only one strong power, but it would be in the far distance, and so Deborah, along with Yaka and Apuipui, would be tasked by Bobbity to go and collect this energy, and so the group does. When eventually approaching this power, they would encounter two people, an old man and a younger man. The younger man, though, seems to be the one with all this power, and Deborah, Yaka, and Apuipui tell the younger man, aka Broly, to cooperate and give him his energy. But Paragus, aka the old man, doesn't want Broly to be involved in this and tries to tell them to get lost. Pweepwee seeing this smirks and with a casual kick nearly kills Paragus, but Paragus is just knocked out unconscious. Broly seeing this gets enraged and charges at Pweepwee in base, and Deborah and Yaka not seeing this coming can't help Pweepwee in time, and so Pweepwee is quickly met with a choke slam and a mouth beam that completely atomizes him. Both Deborah and Yakon are taken aback by this, and Deborah then attempts to spit on Broly with a stone spit. But Broly quickly evades this in time and is about to hit Deborah right in the face, but before he gets his punch off, Paragus would then shock Broly into an unconscious state. At that point, Paragus then questions what they need because he has a proposition. He will give them what they want if they want Broly's energy or whatever, he can give them what they want, and in return, they get him and his son off this planet. And so Deborah looks to Yakon confused what to do, and Bobbity watching this all go down in his crystal ball, yells to Deborah and Yakon in their heads to comply because not only are they going to take his energy, but they can make these two into new henchmen since Pui Pui died. And so Deborah complies, and he and Yakon bring the knocked out Broly and Paragus to their ship, and at that point, Bobbity then tells Deborah to wake up Broly with as much force as he can put out without killing Broly. Deborah does that, and so Broly awakens in a rage, and this gives Bobbity the opportunity to then strike Broly with his spell. This would eventually lead into Broly trembling and having an M marking on his forehead. Majin Broly is then born, and Paragus gets shocked by this and says for Broly to hear him out, and he's mad at the fact that he got set up. And Bobbity then uses that rage of Paragus to his advantage by striking him with the same spell that he striked on Broly, and so Majin Paragus is then born. And so, after that, the two Saiyans then follow Bobbity's commands and head inside the ship where, for the most part, they would just spend sitting down quietly. As we all know, they would eventually make their way towards Earth, and they tell Paragus and Broly to go scout at the highest power levels here, and this would then lead into them heading into the tournament. They would participate, and when they sign in, Paragus recognizes a familiar face, that being Vegeta. Paragus saying Vegeta would get extremely bloodlusted and deep down he is trying to fight Bobbity's mind control. Paragus attempting to fight it would break down saying to Vegeta that he's been waiting for the day for them to meet once again so that he can get his revenge. Vegeta hearing this gets confused and questions who this is. When he questions who he is, Paragus snaps out of Bobbity's mind control and at that point he would reveal himself. He's an old Saiyan waiting for the day to strike vengeance on Vegeta for what he did to him and his son. Vegeta would then get agitated and he would then say how he wasn't the Vegeta that did it, and whatever his father did, he's not affiliated with it. Paragus is too bloodlusted, however, and he believes whatever Vegeta did and whatever type of revenge he can try and get, he's going to take whatever he can get, and this is the best he can do. And so he would basically charge at Vegeta while telling Broly to actually charge in with him. However, Broly's mind is not very strong, and he isn't really listening since he's actually completely in Bobbity's control. At that point, Paragus tries to kick Vegeta away, but Vegeta easily evades, and since Paragus flying with nearly one kick of his own, and Broly's rage then begins to slowly stir up, and that stir would then increase, and eventually his rage would then consume him, and Broly finally would snap out of Bobbity's control to save Paragus. At that point, we would then get Majin Broly seeing Paragus down for the count, and at that point, we would then get Majin Broly versus Vegeta, which leads into Broly overpowering base Vegeta slowly but surely, and even pushing him to Super Saiyan. Vegeta and Broly then begin to go at it, and Bobbity seeing this and knows this would be a good opportunity to get energy, and so he tries to snap Broly back in control and commands him to go to Bobby. 
Babidi's ship. Broly gets back in control just for a brief amount of time and flies back to Babidi's ship where Vegeta would proceed to follow and this leads into Goku and the Supreme Kai's following and then Piccolo and Gohan following. But before he actually goes out to go help the Z Fighters, Gohan would actually admit to Videl that people like Cell are still out there and he needs to go and help fight. At that point, Videl understands that Gohan is the same kid that actually helped fight Cell and was there at the Cell games, and he was the one who helped defeat Cell and save the planet, and Hercule took all the credit. But that's fine, and Videl finds that very charming in Gohan, because he's very humble. At that point, Videl then gives Gohan a hug, saying, go get him, and at that point, Gohan then goes off and ascends to go help out the Z Fighters. Now, while chasing Broly and Vegeta, Goku and Piccolo and Gohan get an update as to what's going on from the Supreme Kais, Well, Goku and the Supreme Kais would be going on ahead, while Piccolo would actually get the intel by hearing on from what's going on because of his good hearing, because he actually started off slower than Goku and the Supreme Kais because they went off to go chase down Broly and Vegeta first, and Piccolo would basically get the intel he heard and tell Gohan on that intel. Now before you guys go on ahead and you guys are confused as to why Piccolo didn't just catch up to Goku and the Supreme Kai and why am I making it so difficult, well, you'll see in a minute. So basically, the Goku and the Supreme Kais arrive at Babidi's hideout and like in canon, Deborah would interrupt the group and at that point he would basically kill Kabito Kai and spit on Krillin. Piccolo and Gohan are actually a little behind since they would be following at the same speed as Shin and Goku and Kabito and they started flying before them. This is a good way to basically have Piccolo not get spit on by Deborah, and so Krillin is the only one spat on. Gohan and Piccolo at that point would then arrive, and Deborah would then head into Babidi's base while Broly and Vegeta decide to duke it out. And at that point, Piccolo, Goku, Gohan, and Shin head down to Babidi's base, where they would see Vegeta in Super Saiyan 2 combating base Broly and Deborah at the same time. It appears that Deborah just joined in on the battle. And by the time Goku, Gohan, and Piccolo, and Shin all arrive down at Babidi's hideout, they would see Vegeta actually being on the back pedal against Broly and Deborah because Broly's growth during battle would actually get the better of Vegeta. At that point, Deborah would be suddenly struck by a blast from Super Saiyan 2 Goku that would knock him out but not kill him, and Shin at that point would then use that opportunity to then go over and kill Deborah while he's down, and Vegeta is frustrated at the fact that this Saiyan's growth is so massive and so much better than his and Goku's and even and Gohan's combined and when Goku arrives to try and help he gets even more frustrated because he senses that Goku has surpassed him and he doesn't want his help. At that point Babidi senses these emotions within Vegeta and Majin Vegeta is still born similar to that of canon. Now when Vegeta is possessed Paragus would actually arrive back at Babidi's base by that time and at that point he would rush at Vegeta with everything that he's got showing him no mercy and as he charges down Vegeta just smirks watching him and he then lifts up his hand at the last second and meets with Paragus's face, firing a powerful key blast that would engulf Paragus's face, killing him instantly. Paragus is killed, and Broly witnessing this would be beyond control at this point, and Broly roars out loud, transforming into a Super Saiyan, and the sheer energy he's giving out would be way more than enough to revive Boo. And so, right as Broly turns Super, Boo's egg would hatch, releasing the monster himself, Majin Boo. Now, when Boo is released, Goku feels both powers and understands that Broly is a much bigger threat, even surpassing his Super Saiyan 3 form casually. Even though Majin Buu is a strong threat, he's not as strong as Super Saiyan 3 Goku, and Broly's even stronger than that, so Broly's a bigger threat, obviously. Gohan says that he and Piccolo will do their best to actually stand against Boo and basically stall, because they need to worry about Broly and need to focus on him. At that point, Goku nods as he then tells Vegeta that they'll have to work together, and Vegeta would just power up saying forget about it as he then tries his best to stand up against Broly but he would just meet with a choke slam and a mouth beam to the face that doesn't kill him but it does some really bad damage on him and he is reverted to base instantly. At that point Goku has no other choice but to transform and so he powers up into Super Saiyan 3 and Broly just feeling Goku's power actually gets excited and allows him to transform. However, he slowly starts to lose his mind and he eventually can't even allow himself to wait for Goku and he just rushes at Goku and intends to hit him with a powerful punch. However, Goku would immediately transform and at that point, he would barely dodge Broly's punch. At that point, he would then try and shoot a full power Kamehameha at Broly's face point blank, but this would do absolutely nothing as Broly just walks through it and grabs his face and proceeds to just throw Goku flying out of Babidi's hideout. Goku would manage to catch himself because remember he's still in a Super Saiyan 3 form. However, the weakened, fatigued base Vegeta would be also thrown out of the hideout and he would be needed to actually be caught. And so Goku uses instant transmission in time to actually catch Vegeta. And so, 
and he then proceeds to dash away from Bobbity's hideout as fast as he can, but Broly would already blitz over there and is now chasing them, and Goku at that point gets an idea, and he proceeds to charge away with Vegeta towards Gohan and Piccolo and Boo. Speaking of Gohan, Piccolo, and Boo, Gohan and Piccolo were easily overpowered by Boo, and Shin was already weaker than Piccolo and Gohan, so his inclusion, like, isn't even relevant, and at that point, Piccolo and Gohan are about to be dealt with by Boo's final attack, but at that point, Goku and Vegeta would arrive with a raging Broly following. However, before Boo's eyes, Shin would then grab Piccolo and Gohan at the last second and teleport them to the Kai world, and quickly goes back to Earth and transports Goku and Vegeta as well to the Kai world. At that point, Broly would have arrived, and not seeing the Saiyans would get pissed, and would only take out his rage on the only thing that he sees, Boo. We cut to the Kai world, and Shin is there healing up the squad, and Goku quickly tells everyone about the fusion dance, but at that point, Shin would then tell Goku and Vegeta that he actually has Potara earrings, and these earrings allow them to actually fuse for one hour, and they don't need to learn some stupid dance that would take them 30 minutes to actually learn, and potentially it could take them way more if they keep on failing and failing. And Potara earrings, it just lasts for one hour, and it's one go. And so at that point, Goku and Vegeta would actually take the earrings, and Vegeta would reluctantly do it because he would understand that Goku is number one and he is the strongest, and there's no other way to beat Broly at the moment, so he'll have no other choice but to comply and so at that point the Potara earrings would then be worn by Goku and Vegeta and Vegeta would then be born at that point Vegeta uses his instant transmission to then appear on the battlefield with Broly who just gets done atomizing Boo completely he would actually try and attempt him to kill him multiple times but after he keeps on regenerating and regenerating Broly just decided to shoot an even bigger blast like every time he keeps on regenerating Broly just thinks that he needs to shoot an even bigger and stronger blast which actually works and proves to be effective because Boo is shredded to every last atom, which means there's no Kid Boo, no Super Boo, or no Oob. Anyways, at that point, Vegeta would then meet with Broly's face, and he would then tell him to bring it on, and at that point, Broly versus Vegeta would then commence, with Vegeta powering up to Super Saiyan, becoming Super Vegito, and easily overpowering Super Saiyan Broly with no effort. However, things start to get serious once Broly goes into his full powered Super Saiyan state and begins to actually overpower and overwhelm Super Saiyan Vegito. At that point, Vegito attempts to go Super Saiyan 2, and even then, he's barely contending with full powered Broly. He needs to finish this off in one go, and he knows what he needs to do. At that point, Vegito then powers up, and at that point, Vegito would then emerge into his Super Saiyan 3 form. At that point, Vegito would then have no other choice but to use his full power attack on Broly, the final Kamehameha, in which Broly, in reaction to this, fires a full-powered mouth beam. It's going to come down to a actual beam struggle. At that point, the final Kamehameha and Broly's mouth beam finally meet with each other, and they do contend with each other for a little bit until Vegito slowly overpowers him, and Broly's face would be met with the final Kamehameha. However, in time, Vegito manages to stop, use his instant transmission, and actually teleport Broly out of the Kamehameha before the entire attack engulfs him and actually kills him. Broly is defeated but Vegito wanted to spare him because Broly didn't do anything wrong and he wasn't a bad guy. Remember he had the M marking same with the boar and the other guys the same markings that Vegeta got just by being possessed. And at that point, Bobbity would still be shown, but Vegeta being so much more powerful than Bobbity, it doesn't even matter, and Bobbity is just instantly killed. And the M on Broly's forehead would actually dissipate, and we would just have an unconscious Broly. At that point, Piccolo, Gohan, and Shin arrive onto the scene, and they don't really know what to do with Broly, and Goku actually defends Broly, saying what they're going to do with him, or Vegeta, I mean. And Shin kind of agrees with this. At first, he was willing to kill Broly, but Vegito kind to convince them out of it and Piccolo didn't really know what to do but since Vegito brought it up they might as well just keep Broly around and Gohan actually agrees with Vegito on this one and so it's all decided that Broly's actually going to stay and whenever he's you know not unconscious Goku and Vegeta are basically going to talk to him and basically try and get to know him and get to understand what happened before Bobbity met him. In general, the Z Fighters just feel sympathy for Broly and they want to make sure he's alright and so they decide to actually take care of him and eventually four years would pass and the Battle of Gods arc would start, however, I'm actually not going to get into that because I'm actually going to get into other things that actually have happened after the Boo Saga or after this version of the Boo Saga because things do happen post-game. However, I will be saving that for part two of What If Broly Was Found in the Boo Saga. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell in case you are new. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join the Discord. My name is Tyler and I'm going to get up out of here. 
Peace out. Bye.